Lent is a good time to ask yourself why God came to earth in Jesus the Christ. The Gospel talks about Jesus' hour, the time when the purpose for his coming to earth would be fulfilled. His hour would include his suffering, his execution, his resurrection and his ascension. In John 12, 27, Jesus declares that his hour, the very reason for his coming to earth, is nigh. Prior to the birth of Jesus, the angel had told Joseph to name the son to be born Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The penalty for sin is death, according to Romans. But the gift of God, it says, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, if Jesus was to fulfil his mission, he would have to die. In Judea at that time, the Romans ruled, and their method of execution was crucifixion. Thus, Jesus the Christ had come to be crucified, to save his people from their sins. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Paul, when comparing the actions of Adam and Jesus, told the Romans, The gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? The horror of crucifixion was known to everyone at the time. Indeed, it was not necessary for any of the gospel writers to describe it. Everyone knew about the horror. The horror was known to Jesus. His agony in Gethsemane was severe as he contemplated his imminent execution. Throughout his life on earth, he must have been horrified from time to time at the thought of it. We find one such time in John 12, 27-28. Jesus has to battle with his natural human response to be excused from his imminent execution alongside his total desire to fulfil his father's wish. As Isaiah prophesied, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord made his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and proclaim his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Thanks be to God. Jesus' obedience to his Father took him to that cross at Calvary and to the horror of crucifixion. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In his obedience to the Father, Jesus the Christ died so that every single human being could live eternally through faith in the one who died to pay for their sins. So what should we do? We each must accept for ourselves God's offer of forgiveness for our sin through the blood of Christ shed at Calvary. We each must accept for ourselves God's gift of eternal life through faith in Christ. And we have to follow Christ by laying down our life for his purpose and his will rather than our own purpose and our will. God in Jesus the Christ served us to the point of giving his earthly life for us. He calls us to do the same for him. Giving our life not simply by dying but by living for him. Allowing him to achieve his will and purpose through us. As Paul wrote to the Romans, our spiritual act of worship is to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, again struck to the core by the depth of your love for us, that in Christ you came to die that we might live. You came to pay for our individual sin and the sin of the whole world on that cross at Calvary 
And we thank you that through accepting Christ as our personal Saviour and Lord, each one can have eternal life with you, eternal life starting on this earth, right through to glory itself. Lord, help us to live for you. Help us to put your will and purpose well ahead of ours. Help us to die to our own will, but to live for yours, for the advancement of your kingdom and the glory of your name. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.